My name is R. Crosby Lyles, and this is News from the Can. And I'm not a doctor. I just play one on TV. What we have here is the circle of death. If you look it up, it's a drinking game. Um, and then there's other, you know, I mean, circle of death. How the hell could you avoid it? It's also like uh, when you fall out of a power boat, the boat can circle around and you can get hit by the prop from the motor. And so, so, I mean, it's just a million things. But I, I couldn't think of anything else to call it, and it's because of this right here. Um, the stoner culture of smoking in a circle. Uh, why is it they're, they always stand in a circle? Well, that's the most efficient way to pass a joint around is in a circle. That's why they do that. And what I'm telling you, the reason, the reason I'm, I'm talking to you about this, and I used to smoke dub way back when, and I quit, I quit smoking pot a long time ago. And, um, you know, and I haven't done drugs or any of that stuff in a long time for personal reasons. But the thing is, the thing about viruses, what you die from with the virus is you die from viral load. You, you die from the amount of virus that's in your system. Your, the virus takes over your cells and enslaves your cells and produces more virus. So when the viral load inside of your body, when the concentration of virus becomes high enough and you have something called a cytokine storm and all this kind of stuff, you, that's what you die from. You die from the actual viral load, essentially. Um, yeah, there's particulars. And I don't want to argue about that necessarily, but essentially it's because the population of virus in your system becomes so high that your body just can't cope with it, essentially. So you can elevate the concentration of the vi your viral load artificially from the outside. If you have a virus that is like COVID-19 that stays alive in the air, and there's some back and forth about this, but apparently it stays alive in the air in an aerosolized form, for three hours, um, which means that it's basically airborne. Now, if you're in a tight, tightly packed room full of people like these folks here smoking pot and you're exhaling smoke on each other, chances are you're going to pass that virus around. But what's more important about that is if you're like stoned as hell and you're hanging out in some room and the, the ventilation isn't that good and some of y'all might be, you know, uh, sucking and fucking, <laughs> you know, I mean, you're passing a joint in one direction and a bottle of booze in the other direction. And everybody's putting their lips on it and stuff like that. You're increasing the, vi the viral load of the air in the room. And, uh, you know, putting yourself in harm's way. Because what they found is that, you know, why are so many caregivers dying? Why are so many doctors and things? It's because they become tired and they run down their immune system, which reefer has a tendency to run your immune system. Getting getting stoned, getting fucked up, drinking and smoking dope and doing other shit, cocaine, whatever else, and sucking and fucking and all that stuff, um, weakens your immune system and makes you tired. And, you know, and people, when they're stressed out, when there's shit going on, like what's going on now, uh, people get stressed out, then they're going to be reaching for the fucking, they're going to be reaching for the dope. I'm sorry, but that's just how it is, and they're gonna want to like, they're gonna want to commiserate, and hang out, you know, and which might be like a bad idea. Now, if you're gonna do that, what I would say is do it outside where there's a nice breeze, or open some frickin' windows. You know what I'm saying? Uh, apparently, COVID-19 likes colder conditions, so drinking ice cold beverages, even if it's ice cold beer. You know, I don't know. It's probably not good. Uh, and, and I guess people are drinking a lot of alcohol, like whiskey and stuff like that. Vodka, whiskey, whatever. Uh, apparently, because I I guess, I don't know if it has any efficacy or not. I don't know. I haven't researched it. I haven't looked at it. For all I know, it's great. But they say that warm beverages are better. And it's a good idea to, to if you feel warm, don't worry about it. Go ahead and put a jacket on or uh, a sweatshirt or something like that. It's better to, be, better to stay warm and sweat that shit out. Stay warm, open some windows, get some fresh air. Because closed, in closed spaces, the, the viral load in the room, because it's, because it's airborne, is going to go up. You know? And there might be some back and forth. About, Do your own checking. I'm not a doctor. I just play one on TV. <coughs> Thank you.
right? Uh, so, <laughs> so there's that. The other thing too is, and it's bad news, and you can click off if you want to, but I really want to try to listen. You know, I'm, I made the biggest mistake in my life that any human being can make, and I took somebody's life, my own brother's life, and that was a traumatic. It's something that you that you never recover from. It's you know, it's it's such a terrible experience. You know, when somebody dies, it's just fucking retarded. There's really no, it's not cool. There's nothing cool about it. It's fucking retarded. And going to prison is fucking retarded, too. And if you get fucked up and you put the keys in, of the, in your ignition of your car and you drive somewhere, you are trying to go to prison. So just remember, and, and God forbid you should have a wreck and somebody dies, especially a child, when you're fucked up. Because that DA will try to fucking bury you. They will flush you down the toilet. And you don't want to go to prison. And that's just not what happened to me, you know. What happened to me was a, a, was a uh, shooting, so it sucked, and it was retarded. Um, but getting fucked up is how you end up in retarded situations. And there's no retarded situation more retarded than being part of a, a you know, a, veh a vehicular homicide. Those guys, those people that I ever saw in prison, those those people were. From racing, you know, I knew a guy, he got 15, 10, 10 years. He got 10 years for vehicular homicide because he was racing his car. He was, I think he was in Hollywood, Fort Lauderdale, somewhere like that, and he was racing his car, and there was an accident. Somebody died, you know, and he went. they sent him to prison. And there was another guy. He just had a, a couple of beers. Got somebody crossed the line and smacked into him, killed his wife and his, his mother-in-law. They gave this, and he was an old man, too. They gave him 15 years. And uh, that was a he would he did not have a good time, so there's that. Um, so that's why I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this because um, what I have to do for my own life, you know, to to make my own life make sense. Um, because at that time, you know, it's like you know, suicide has been like you know that's. In my mind, I'm, I'm thinking, well, you know, that's that's always like on the table. Not really, but you know what I mean. It's it's a thought, and it's like that doesn't really work because it doesn't help. Suicide is fucking. It's not a good. It's not good for our family and friends. There's no reason to put them through that. So what I do is I clean house, trust God, and help others. I, I'm involved in 12-step recovery and shit like that. And I try to help people as best I can. I'm, I, don't, I don't have as much energy lately and stuff. That's a long digression there. But uh, basically what I want to say is that uh, if I've got information that can you know, help you guys not die, then I'm going to share it. And that's why I get my that's why I put my face on here because I get ideas I don't necessarily hear them out there. But when I share it on YouTube, a lot of times, very shortly after that, I'll see it on TV. Somebody will be talking about it. So I try to put these things out there as quickly as I can. Okay. In the 80s, I picked up my first uh, white chip in 12-step recovery in December of 1990. And uh, there were a lot of people back then that had. Uh, that, that was in the height of the AIDS epidemic, and that was at the height of the crack epidemic. So uh, there were some folks that I knew that were in recovery, and they they were married, and so obviously they're gonna you know they're gonna have sex. And it was back then that I had found out something that was kind of curious. They were both HIV positive, but they were making each other sick because they were increasing each they were having sex and they were very intimate and sleeping together and everything else. They were increasing each other's viral load. And it made them sicker. And I thought, that's like kind of like a mind-bending kind of thing, but it makes sense. And it makes sense because that's what kills you. What kills you is the viral load. So if you and your girlfriend are both sick, it might not be such a good idea to, to be fucking each other. And I'm sorry about the language, but, you know, I'm t I, I need to be able to communicate efficiently. And I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? This is YouTube. You're supposed to be able to say shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. That's just how it is. I'm sorry. It's not television. It's YouTube. And, you know, and, and uh, fuck all that.
you know? Oh, we got to be all nicey-nice and make things nice for the children. It's shit bullshit. YouTube is supposed to be for 13, uh, a minimum age of 13 and over. PG-13, you're supposed to be able to say shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits, and that's how it is. So anyway, if you, if you and your old lady or old man or whatever the case is, and I don't care, I don't, you know, it's not, nothing to me, if you and your significant other, your sexual partner, are both sick, it might not be such a good idea to be fucking each other too much. You know what I mean? You might want to have a little bit of space and get some airflow in that room, some ventilation to let the air out of the room, right? Another thing is, too, is I know I got a dark in here. Open a window. Open a window, let the sunshine in. Um, because sunshine is UV. It's got a lot of UV in it. And these lights that I have here are uh, they're incandescent. Uh, they're not incandescent. They're uh, actually those curly fluorescent bulbs that are actually in a ceiling fan. That has a lot of ultraviolet in it. Now, I don't have the quantitative research. I can't tell you the efficacy of ultraviolet you know, tube lights. So, you know, but the sun um, is is definitely good. COVID doesn't like warmer temperatures also. So you might want to, if you're sick, if you don't feel well, you want to raise your body temperature. I would not be personally, I'm not a doctor. I just play one on TV. Um, I would, I, you know, I would get out in the sun and I would try to raise my body temperature. If you're a little warm, don't worry about it. Stay warm, sweat it out, cover up, don't get the chills, you know what I mean? And get your ass out in the sun and get some sunlight. Because the rays of the sun are, we're light creatures. You need that to, to, to make ATP, which you make like your body weight in ATP a day to survive. So get your ass out in the sun, get your ass out in the, in the fresh air regularly. Open a fucking window. Don't close yourself off. I mean, I don't know what your neighborhood is like or whatever. You might have, you know, air pollution or shitty neighbors or dogs, animals, pets, whatever, you know. Um, but what you really want to do is you want to avoid that circle of death. Just stay out of the fucking smoke room. Stay out of the smoke circle. You don't want to have a bunch of people being about around a bunch of people who are blowing big clouds of vape and all that kind of shit too. Because I mean, I know this was you know I was young, you know what I mean. I, not even that young about people standing around smoking and joking. You know what I'm saying? Even if you don't, even if you don't use, if you go to a twelve step fellowship, there are folks out standing around smoking, joking, blowing vape clouds. You know what I'm saying? And I would just say to my my vaping brothers and sisters out there. Try to blow your vape cloud up, up and away from everybody. Because we don't know if you got it or not. You know what I'm saying? And um, everybody's going to get it. It's, 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 uh, it's airborne. Everyone is going to get COVID sooner or later. The, everybody on the planet is going to, unless you live like in a tomb somewhere, everybody is going to get COVID-19. So it's not about like the fear of getting it. It's about don't. It's about trying not to get it during the crest of the wave. You don't want to get it during the crest of the wave. <laughs> and there's probably going to be more than one wave too. So um, don't get it during the crest of the wave. And this whole thing about well, you know, it's an old person's disease. Bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah, basically that's true. That's true. It mostly affects old people, but you can knock down your immune system and fuck around to the point, you can knock your immune system down to the point where you become susceptible, especially if you're smoking weed. Because, you know, I mean, you smoke weed, and what are you going to do? You're going to cough. <coughs> so I'm just saying to all my young brothers and sisters out there, um, you know, Stay where it's viral load. Even if you even if you have it yourself and your you know all your buddies and everybody in the room. If everybody in the room has got it, then you really want to like open a window. You know what I'm saying? Don't get don't trap yourself off in the car. You know I saw this guy the other day. He was in the car and he he had his mask. He had his mask was down because I do this too. I mean I've been wearing a mask for 30 years. Down around your chin. 
because you want to talk, you know, and you're, he's with his girlfriend in the car. They got the windows rolled up, and you can tell, you know, you can tell they're, you know, smokers. You know what I'm saying? And they're sitting in the parking lot at the supermarket. The guy's got his mask down to his chin like this, which is fine. I guess, you know, they're intimate or whatever. But you got this thing right below your, you know, you just contaminated the shit out of this mask, and you got sitting up below your chin. You know what I'm saying? So, if it was a really lethal virus, we'd be we would be fucking screwed. And um, I got a thing, and the somebody sent me a text that had a video of a guy. Um, cleaning his groceries uh, when he got home from the supermarket showing people how you know and you put a line across the table and you put all your shit on one side and then you take it out and you wipe it down and, and throw the box away and sh you know and all this kind of stuff and I'm like I'm looking at that and I'm thinking dude we're screwed I mean me and my, my wife and, and her kid and everything we're, we're fucking screwed already <laughs> And my mother's 88 years old, and I'm like, geez. I would hosed her stuff. I had to get her some cat food and stuff, and I hosed it down with Lysol. You know, it's probably okay. You know, I, I wear a mask over there. I stay, keep my distance from her. Because I don't know, you know, I don't know if I whether her got the shit or not. I don't know if she does or not. I mean, she's a strong old bird, you know. She's, she's talking about... Uh, Quarantine. She says, oh, I've been through quarantines before. She's talking about back measles quarantines and shit like that. Whatever they had. I don't you know, I don't know what they were quarantining for necessarily back in the thirties, forties and fifties, but they you know, they she's been through actual no bullshit quarantines for other diseases. Coming from northern Alabama, you know. Dirt farm. She didn't even have. A, they didn't even have an outhouse until she was 12 years old. They used to shit behind the fucking uh, chicken coop and shit out in the woods. Yeah, that's FDR brought that through. So that's a little little note for you. So anyway, I'm just telling you. You know, um, I love you guys. You know, I, I want you to. I want you to be safe. Um, I got to watch out for other people um, because, you know, I'm not alone in this world. And uh, the world is what we make it. You know what I mean? Uh, it's only a pile of shit if I'm making a pile of shit. But I really don't want that. So, that's it. Take care of yourselves. Open a window. Get some sun. Stay warm. Even if you're already warm. Stay warmer. Change your clothes. Don't sit in sweaty clothes. Wash your clothes regularly. Wash your bedding regularly. Maybe maybe more than once, maybe like twice a week, wash your bedding. Yeah. And stuff like that. And if you and your old lady or old man or whatever, you and your significant other are both sick, you know, you might want to lay off the hokey pokey for a while. I'm just saying, you know, until you get better. And that's all I got. My name is R. Crosby Lyles. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, please rate, comment, subscribe. I know I've got a foul mouth. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I just, you know, this is YouTube. You know, if you want clean content, watch TV. That's just how I feel about it. Yeah, yeah it's because to me it's real. That's how I really talk. I'm a foul-mouthed, you know, I'm a foul-mouthed human being. And, uh, I don't know, maybe somebody might convince me to, to, to not do that. I notice that people are cleaning up on on YouTube and stuff, and <laughs> you know, I I just got to go against the grain. I got to go against the flow. It's in my nature. What can I tell you? My name is R. Crosby Lyles. Thanks for watching. I love you guys. Be cool. That's it. See you. Bye. Out. <laughs>